To start with, I'm Simon Kelson, so I'm the Managing Director of uh, SB Electronic Systems, or Telepen, as some of, you, some of you know it. I started with the business in March last year, about a week before COVID struck. So my first job was to walk in the door, say hello to everybody, go home. Uh, and I'll see you, get to know you on Teams. Uh, and some of the people are furloughed, and some, some people just went home, and I literally met them for the first time on Teams, and didn't meet them physically for about another four months later. So uh, that was my first lockdown story, and an interesting way to get to know the team. So what I want to do now, it's the, it's the post-lunch session, traditionally the one where everyone's feeling at the most sleepy. We've got two <coughs> short 15-minute sessions. This is the first one, and I'm just going to talk to you about the future of SB Electronic Systems Limited, because that's who we are. Um, and I'm going to put this slide up. So just to give you a little bit of the background of the business, SB was incorporated in 1967, but I don't think the business actually got going until the early 70s, or late 60s, early 70s. But that, according to Companies House, is when it started. So it's been going a little while. The two founders, George Sims and Chris Barnett, are still shareholders in the business today. Now they're octogenarian, and George is still involved. I speak to him most weeks. So George and Chris, one of the first things they did was invent the telepen barcode symbology. So that symbology was created in the late 60s, early 70s, and is still an internationally recognized, not quite as recognized as it was, barcode symbology uh, today. We manufactured terminals and readers as well, uh, and it happened that our first order, George tells me, was from Manchester University, although we delivered, I think, the first order in, I think it might have been Sheffield, ahead of, uh, of Manchester. And then at some point, and it's not entirely clear when this happened, Telepen was adopted as a trading name, but never really properly adopted as a trading name. So there is some confusion. I know when I've been on the call with people like DMU that they refer to us as SB. Uh, some people refer to us and know us as Telepen, other people know us as SB Electronic Systems. So there is definitely a confusion. And actually, the Telepen barcode symbology and the Telepen systems have that name as well. So there's a confusion between is it a product or is it us as a business? who Telepen is. So that's where we are at the moment. Uh, so looking now at what we're thinking about for the future. Uh, and so new management, well that happened right at the start of, uh, uh, of the, the lockdown. But what has happened in that time, we've seen a natural progression as I've been there and started to make changes to the organisation, that we've got a new tier of uh, enthusiastic managers coming through and starting to run the business. And it goes right down from Barney and Kevin at the back running their sales areas. Daisy stepped up and is now running the administration of the business and also all the marketing. We've got Brian who's come in to do the technical side of the business. Uh, and run that as well. So we've created this new management structure and in the meantime we've lost some of those uh, older members of the team. So Alan Elks retired very shortly after I joined and was always planning to retire. So I had a month with him, just about, and he then retired in lockdown. So, uh, and, uh, and, and Mark Wiltshire also chose last year as a point where he was going to retire as well. So actually, the business in terms of people has changed <coughs> enormously. We've set out on a new strategy, uh, and this is something I've had long conversations with the shareholders before I took over. They were very keen that we started to make things again. And you know, we've gone from this position where 
they made terminals, barcode readers, they've created a symbology. They actually made stuff. Now, when I joined last year, we had one guy putting stuff together in the business. Uh, and that is a substantial change, and we're reselling a lot of, uh, of products. So the strategy is to start to make stuff again, uh, and make stuff that is relevant and up to date. Uh, so, and we're looking to grow, and we create clear product roadmaps and updates. Now, straight after this one, Brian is going to talk to you about what we're doing with our existing product portfolio, and also what we're planning to do again, uh, do as well. So we've looked briefly at kiosks. Well, we've imported kiosks from across the globe, right, right way around the world from Australia. We looked at that and say, well, that's not sustainable. You know, why are we in, you know, bringing bent metal halfway around the world to install it in the UK? So this year, we built our own kiosks. So some, some customers had kiosks delivered that were actually made in the UK this year. And that was fortuitous. I'd like to say it was Foresight that said it, but actually, given the challenges that the global supply chain suffered, uh, it meant that we could actually make those and deliver them rather than waiting for them, but actually it was a, it was a decision around sustainability originally. So we have made a small acquisition this year. Uh, and standing in the back of the room is Jonathan Lee. Yep. Jonathan joined us when we acquired a business called Firebee Limited in October last month. So Firebee uh, brings a, an electronic design and manufacture capability back to the business. So they're based in Bristol. Uh, and we looked at them because they were helping us with a, another product range. We have a thing called an iWave board, which we sell via a, a catering uh, distributor or a wholesaler. And that board is designed to recognize food, cook it for the right temperature and for the right length of time, and make sure it, it's ready to go. And it's all done automatically. You scan the barcode, pop it in, and it cooks it. So there's a lot of that being, or we hope a lot of that being used in, uh, in the NHS, where they have specific needs on specific wards where you get a, uh, uh, you don't have regular meal times. Maternity springs to mind. Yeah, where it's, you're never sure what time you're going to be ready to eat a meal. And so that is, deals with that capability. So we were looking at upgrading that technology and we spoke to Jonathan. Uh, and I went, met, went down there and met him and thought, actually, this is perfect for us to regain that design and manufacturing capability. So delivering on that first part of the strategy. Now, Jonathan is going to tell you a little bit more about the bits and pieces that he can bring to the story as well. Uh, and also, he will get involved in updating some of our existing technology. Kevin's spoken about the RV2, the device that goes on the wall, which allows room booking to be uh, to work properly. Well, we're going to look at upgrading that type of technology. Some of the technology we put in our turnstiles, uh, well, we integrate with our turnstiles as well. We're going to upgrade it all. And Jonathan will play a key part in that, and, and, and the team at Firebee. They're based out in Bristol. So, uh, I know it well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Brislington, yeah. So, good. So, that's Firebee and the acquisition. Now, I spoke earlier about the confusion with the brand. Who are we? You know, are we Telepen? Are we SB, SB Electronic Systems? Now we've got Firebee in there as well. There is probably plenty of room for further confusion around who we are and how we know. So we're in a process at the moment, it's top secret. We were hoping actually that today we go Shazam, there it is, that's a new brand. But we haven't quite agreed on it yet. So there will be a new trading name for the business. Uh, and that will cover all elements of the business. So not only the stuff we do for libraries, uh, the academic library sector, 
the stuff we do for commercial organisations and also for specific products like the iWave board, our design consultancy uh, and the manufacturer. So we're thinking of a name that will cover all that and as soon as we know it, we will tell everyone about it. But we can't do that right now. Yeah. That will then see a brand new website uh, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll get away from what we do at the moment, which is promoting other people's products uh, on our website, to promoting our own and ideas and the future. So that's where SB Electronic Systems is going. We will still have the, be the legal entity of SB Electronic Systems, but we will just have that brand new trading name when we can reveal it. Okay. So good, that brings me to the end of my five minutes, the 15 minutes, uh, I started a little bit late, but are there any questions at all about any of that that I've mentioned before I finish? And hand over to probably what? So, go, so, go. so that means that all in the future, all of the products will be made in the UK? Or that's that's the what we're aiming for, yeah. So it is that, uh, it's that sustainable, of it and also the, the desire to manufacture. We, we're not get, ever going to manufacture in such volumes that we need to think about offshoring it. We'll still do niche manufacturing in the UK. Yeah, get rid understand your excitement and the positive nature of manufacturing in the UK. For those of us who've bought a substantial amount of somebody else's product from you, i.e. kiosks, Obviously, this is a bit of a concern. Their long-term products. So the the long-term. What what's the? We are going to continue to. You're going to give us. The oh, best absolutely. Product. So we're going to continue to. So we have the capability to make the spare parts for your kiosk here. But the key element of that is the software. Yeah. So we are still not planning to do anything about the kiosk software, we're still licensing that from FE Tech. And, we, and FE Tech will continue to support that with us. But how much development are you going to put into it? If, oh, the, am I reading it right, you're going to develop your own kiosk? Well, you have your own kiosk. But the, the kiosk we have at the moment is the FE Tech, FE Tech right. kiosk made in the UK. But with the right. FE Tech software, which is still developed, by FE Tech in, uh, in Australia. Okay, so there's so, still a long term commitment to the FE yeah, yeah, yeah. Tech software. Yeah. So, all the, so all the kiosk software, at the moment, you can see we've, we're, we're busily redeveloping Century Cloud, which is a big project in itself. So, we, even if we wanted to, we don't have the bandwidth to redevelop a kiosk so some kiosk software. So, <clears throat> it's a long, as far as we're concerned, the FE Tech relationship is a long-term one. Okay. And, and I'm interested with access control systems. Obviously, you do a lot of business with getting your phone installed with their their products. Do you see yourself uh, moving into manufacture of um, turnstiles and gates? or No, we do specialists. We, we, that's specialist stuff. So we're talking about specific electronic sure. stuff that works with our software, so and maybe the RV2s, the interfaces and yeah. stuff like that. Right. So we, we have no interest in manufacturing cases at this stage, yeah. But we do have to use IDL now, so yeah. they're manufactured in Britain anyway. Right, okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. And so if you have any other concerns about that, then we'll be happy to provide you with some written reassurance about it, yeah? yeah. Good. Any other questions?